Hi, my name is Trevor and I am going to start this video by introducing myself and this car. This is a 1978 Hot Wheels black line, flat out 442. It's modeled after a Oldsmobile Fastback Cutlass Coupe. All right, the, the 442 that year would have been kind of a Fastback model. It would have been a one or two year model. Um, by 79, mid-year, they changed it to the Herstols, and they changed it more to a notchback thing. This one's in okay shape. Um, had a lot of paint chips and whatnot. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to restore it. I'm going to make it the custom car that I want it to be. So this is the car that would be modeled after, really, which is a 78 442 Fastback. Um, it's always been one of my favorite cars. And this Hot Wheels, even before um, I loved like Ols Cutlasses, I always thought this car was really fun to play with. So it's only got one rivet in the back, and um, kind of try to blast it out with the drill. I try to just use kind of the weight of the drill and gravity to go at it and not have to push too hard on it and end up ruining the, the casting or the post. So it took me a few times, a few tries looking at it and deciding whether or not I wanted to keep going. Um, I kind of have a plan for this car and how I want to customize it. Uh, I just want to paint it to a certain paint scheme. Um, these are kind of what they looked like when they were new. The orange one, the yellow one, and the gold one were kind of pretty common. This green one is, is a lot more rare. And then, of course, there's the blue one that was the reissue a few years ago. And now that we have it drilled out, we're going to go ahead and see if we can open it up. Just kind of coax it out of there, and it popped right out. Yeah. So I did the whole thing in um, as a silent film so I could do the voiceover afterwards. Otherwise, you'd probably uh, hear a lot of goofy background noises of me listening to the blues and watching cartoons. And then when I put it in fast forward, it'd be all funny sounding. Um, the wheels, sorry, the axles are kind of um, crimped in, so I, I decided I'm not going to do a wheel swap on this. I've always liked the black wall um, standard Hot Wheels wheels anyway. The taillights and the headlights are part of the casting, so we're going to leave the casting bare metal. I'll clean it up just a little bit, and I'll clean up the wheels a little bit. Um, but uh, we're going to leave that kind of as is. The glass on this thing, the window, is in really great shape. I'll clean it up, but I'm not going to, I don't plan on polishing it or doing anything silly with it because it's, it's actually in pretty good shape. The interior is obviously in great shape because, you know, the car itself wasn't in bad shape and this was all inside. I've always liked the louvers. I like the front grille. I think it's kind of a, a cool design. The way they did, I'm going to paint these runners a different color. Um to kind of match a car that I have in mind, a car that I used to own actually, not the exact car obviously, not a 78 442, but kind of a similar Olds style car, an old Cutlass that I used to drive. I think it's kind of funny this thing has two sets of exhaust pipes. It's got exhaust pipes going down the back and then it's got the headers sticking out the side, um, but I guess not completely unheard of in the hot rod world to have both and have a little switcheroo thing to open the pipes up. Uh, so there we got all the parts all apart. I think this one's modeled after the the mid-engine 442, which a customized 442. Um, it had kind of a, a body kit in the back. It had that air dam on the back or whatever you're gonna call it. It had bigger wheels in the back than in the front. It made the cover of Hot Rod Magazine back in the day. Um, so, you know, I mean, I know this isn't a dead ringer for that car, but I really think that it kind of encapsulates like a race car version of this body or this car. And they're, they're you know, they're kind of rare these days, the real car itself, because, I mean, they only made it for one or two years, 78 and 79, fastback. So here we have the cars. Um, the reissue that they did a bunch of years later, just kind of a few years ago, was a blue one. They called it the 442 much instead of the flat out 442, but I don't find any differences other than the, they painted a different color and the plastic interior is a different color. Um, 
and obviously they changed the writing on the base, but you know the the actual casting itself seems to be identical. And um, I was really glad when they reissued this. Like I bought a whole bunch of them and gave them to like everybody that I knew that had kids. Like give your kid this Cutlass. <laughs> it's my favorite Hot Wheels car. And then. Um, I've decided to kind of start restoring and modifying Hot Wheels cars because I've collected them since I was a little kid and I've always loved them and um, you know, I just kind of needed a cheaper hobby to deal with because I kind of restore and modify and fix guitars and buy and sell and collect them and they're kind of expensive. So here's two other flat out 442s from my collection and they are both uh, in a lot worse shape. The, um, the roofs have been b bashed in actually going in mirror image of each other which it which is kind of funny but it's really sad and maybe i'll probably restore these someday paint one of them green like the other like the rare one and but here's the parts we're going to deal with this is the first time i've ever dealt with lye or caustic soda um to strip the paint i put a couple cars in there that i wanted to do and um yeah it was it was a learning experience i tried to be as careful as possible and um, the results were pretty pretty good. I, I enjoyed the results, or at least you know found the results to be acceptable. Um, I'm also going to use because I'm going to try to do one of these videos every month throughout the year of 2022, and so to kind of keep up that momentum, I'm doing a couple cars at a time, and you can kind of see the orange guy at the bottom. That's the the flat out 442 right there. Um, I used glass because I felt like glass might be the safest thing to use and now uh, we used boiling water and then we uh, dumped the soda in it and then we're going to clean up the parts and just kind of dawn dish soap soapy water uh, with an old toothbrush and kind of just cleaning it up and uh, they cleaned up real nice and the windshield's got a couple little scuffs in it but nothing that I want to you know like I said I don't plan on polishing it this car was also the, the cover of the Hot Wheels game back in the day I remember seeing it and the car came with the game. I never owned the game, but I owned the car. And I'll admit that I, I painted a couple, one of these black back in the day, like brush painted it, because I kind of felt like it looked like Mad Max's car. <laughs> and I know Mad Max's car is completely different than this. You know, his was a Ford, Australian Ford, and this is a an American Oldsmobile. But I, you know, I kind of feel like the, I don't know, just the general way that the car is is just very very cool and very Mad Max. Um, I bought these brass brushes for the kind of the Dremel motor tool because uh, I wanted them to be pretty soft and I knew that the castings would be you know this is kind of pop metal or aluminum and stuff and it's not you know they're durable enough for kids to play with and beat the crap out of but I didn't want to use like a a really harsh wire brush because, you know, I'm not trying to polish these and make these as beautiful as possible. Like some people, you know, really clean these up and make them look, you know, spectacular. But I just kind of wanted it to be, you know, one step better than good enough. Which is, you know, we're going to clean it up as good as possible. I noticed this casting is kind of rough. And this was the first year they made them. Like the orange one is far, to my knowledge, I think the orange one was first. And the yellow one was second and the gold one was third. And I don't know where the green one comes into play, but I know it was kind of rare, like it only came in a gift set or something. Um, we're going to clean up the base just a little bit. And again, I didn't take the wheels out, so really I'm just kind of trying to clean up just the, like the obvious corrosion. And we're trying to polish up kind of the obvious areas. The back bumper is going to be a part that we're going to polish up. The headlights and the tail lights, uh, make sure that they, you know, shine like they would have kind of back in the day when they were new because you know I've bought Hot Wheels cars since I was really really young since the early 80s um, and I never remember the base being like super duper shiny but I always remember them kind of having a, a certain kind of bare metal shine um, and like I said this one even when I was a kid man the orange one that I played with as a kid I beat the living H out of it because you know not to be rough on it but just because since it was one of my favorite cars whenever I pull my old ones out of kind of storage and look at them I can always I always remember which ones were my favorites because you know they they definitely look worse for wear so we're going to take an ultra fine sharpie kind of orange and color the turn signals in amber 
that shine that, that pop through the body. And um, I also did the tail lights, but I forgot to video it. So I did the tail lights with an ultra fine red sharpie. Uh, I do plan on modeling this car after a, another car, so I am going to paint the interior. Um, so I'm priming the bare metal first. Um, and yeah, I'm doing it by hand because I guess if it was the interior of a car, it'd be, you know, carpet and cloth and stuff like that. So it doesn't need to look, you know, you wouldn't want to brush paint the, the body of the car. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to paint the interior maroon. Um, so, you know, in painting the interior maroon, I got to paint part of the black uh, plastic part too. So the, the dashboard and kind of the firewall and... Um, the steering wheel and then the floor kind of behind the roll bar. I'm going to leave the roll bar black. I primered the runners because we're painting the runners. Um, kind of the quarter panels are uh, the bottom of the, the body. It would be the bottom of the doors. You know, if it was like a, a real car, we're painting those bright red. So I primered those first to make sure that the red would pop. And I'm just kind of using testers, um, little modeling bottles because uh, I used them as a teenager to build plastic model kits and you know I don't remember the paint being terrible or anything like that so we spent a little time brushing on this using the old uh, helping hands um, and just some junk mail to protect my countertop just in case I were to drooble anything and I mixed the testers red with testers um, kind of rust brown to form this burgundy or maroon red which was the interior of the car that I used to own that was you know kind of similar to this car I'll show a picture of it later it, you know it's obviously not a two-door fastback 442 it was nothing special it was just a Cutlass Supreme with a little baby V8 in it and it was kind of fun to drive and it was beat up and you know I didn't mind if it got you know I definitely wasn't always nice to it. I kept it running for a lot longer than I, I should have. It was a 1986 car, and I drove it up until, I think 2015 is when I finally sold it. Uh, well past its service life, like a car with a carburetor. Like, people would laugh at it, and I loved driving it. I thought it was fun to drive. Um, yeah, just like the old school car, I guess. I replaced it with something else, though you know, for the last couple of years. So I'm also going to paint underneath the lights on the casting. I guess I didn't paint it. I colored it with a Sharpie. Black, because you can see it through the front bumper, through the kind of the, I guess it's not really a bumper. It's some kind of air dam thing, which is, that's what reminded me of Mad Max's car is the front end of it is just so, you know, goofy. So we're using a Tamiya fine primer. Um, and I'll tell you, I did a couple cars at the same time, and the priming came out, like, perfect. Like, that stuff is high-quality good stuff. I also tried to paint the inside of the doors. This is the car that I used to own. This is when I primered it to paint it. Um, yeah, I laugh at all you want. I get it. It's a four-door. Uh, but the the back bumper was rusted out. The bottom of the doors was rusted out. The floors were kind of rusty. Um, but I painted it black, and then I painted the bottom of it red because the, the bottom of it was pretty rusty and it needed gloss paint so it wouldn't soak up more water but yeah I drove the heck out of that car for years and loved it and, and people thought it was great and then when I sold it they were like are you gonna build another one well I you know not really so here's it here it is it's all primer glory um, and then we're gonna paint it black of course gloss black um, here, I, I believe I used Tamiya Gloss Black. It might have been a Testers, but I'm pretty sure it was Tamiya. Um, yeah, it was definitely Tamiya. Now that I'm sorry, I'm babbling. Should have scripted this out, shouldn't I have? So, you know, you can make fun of my spray painting form in the comments if you'd like to. Probably should have wore a glove. I promise you I was wearing a an N95 because I have a bunch of them. You know, I wear one to work every day, so... When they start smelling kind of funky, we use them for other things instead of everyday use. So here I'm drilling out the post for the, um, the little screw, the 256 screw. Um, and again, I'm just using the weight of the drill and gravity 
to kind of allow it to go down. So it takes me a little, I even have this under fast forward, but you know, didn't want to beat it up too much. Here it is in all of its black beauty. And uh, my car, even when I painted it, you know, I spray painted it. It was a real car and I spray painted it, which, you know, that's funny too. I left all the stainless steel chrome trim on it, on the windows and everything. And, you know, used to polish it up. <laughs> you know, they always say you can't polish a turd, but I used to polish that thing all the time. And I thought it looked, you know, pretty funny for a car that you drive to work every day. Cause I, you know, didn't want like a, a nice car to get beat up in the work parking lot or whatever. Uh, so I didn't drive in the winter time cause you know, rear wheel drive car doesn't do well in the snow and it was already rusty, but I drove it all summer spring and fall there I chromed the kind of grill using the Molito Molto um, one millimeter and two millimeter pens here I'm kind of touching up the the window chrome with the smaller pen marker we're doing the trunk cylinder and the Olds logo in the front um, before I sold my car I pulled the Olds logo out because I loved it so here's the car as it was um, and uh, you know, it was okay. And I, I put a, a bottom a screw in it that had a, a Phillip, or sorry, a hex head. So it looked more like a, um, what do you call it, a, a rivet. So here's the finished guy. Um, you know, obviously it's not the same car as the one I drove. But taillights were very similar. The front header panel was very similar. Obviously same frame, same interior as a car like this would have. And... Uh, yeah, there's my flat out 442.